352 VTK concepts. And uh, today I just gotta, actually today I just wanna talk, man, right? So um, the topic of discussion is I saw a podcast a couple days ago where these two individuals were talking about uh, 52 blocks as a system and so on and such and how it was never a coherent system and um, the one guy in particular was speaking as if like he had no respect for the system at all, right? Uh, so you have an individual who is pontificating as if he were an expert in something that he on an authority and a subject that he has no first hand knowledge of, and then another individual attempting to seem like he wanted to poke holes in the validity of the system in general. Now here's the thing. Right, and I try, you know, I, I I make a point of staying out of politics and all that stuff like that, and I I hope that that will continue because I'm not intending to disrespect or offend anybody with this. Right, however, there has to be some clarification. Right, and I notice that there's a gross uh, disparity in the acceptance of certain things when it comes from people my color. Right, so before I go into that, what I want to say is this: Now, I grew up in the '80s. Right. In the 80s, 3 o'clock, kids weren't outside in New York City because they were all in the house watching the old Kung Fu flicks, the Shaw Brothers movies. If you grew up when I grew up, then you know what I'm talking about, right? Uh, one of the things that always happened in those movies is two guys would fight, they go have a brief exchange, they back up, and the one guy would be like, oh, you must have studied that, studied that the Shaolin Temple in the South, right? Or, you know, oh, is that the Iron Fist? They could recognize the style based on how the individual fought. Now, what that has to do with this is, I've said in the past, and I checked to make sure, right? I'm talking about as far back as the first podcast I ever did, the Monks and Mavericks podcast on Delta 2 Alpha. And I said that 52 has always differed from one borough to the next. But there are core elements which define it as 52, right? Just like in the Kung Fu movies, right now. The brother Jason Saw, shout out to him, right? He caught it. He got it, right? Because he texted me this morning and, and he said that. He's like, yo, I think people are looking at it wrong, right? And he made the uh, juxtaposition between the different karate styles and kung fu styles with 52, right? You'll have Wing Sun has a bunch of different lineages. And each one of those lineages do something different. I can speak on that because I'm a Wing Chun practitioner. My lineage trace back from Eric Toval to Moyat, from Moyat to Ip Man. So I, I have some idea what the fuck I'm talking about, right? Boom. Same thing with Kali, right? The FMA has all different type of branches, but there are things that make them similar that you immediately recognize that the person is doing Filipino martial arts, whether it's Balan Tawak, whether it's Makiti Tertia, or whatever, right? Um, same thing with karate. There are, you have Ishiru, Wadaru, all these different styles of karate, but there are certain elements that exist in all of them that immediately designate them. You know when you see them that that's karate that you're looking at. Same with Kung Fu, and I can go on and on and on. Why does it have to be different with 52 blocks? Any 52 block practitioner who is a real 52 pra uh, block practitioner immediately can identify when somebody is doing authentic 52 blocks with somebody who isn't because there are certain elements that exist across the spectrum in 52 that have to be there for it to be 52 blocks. It has always been like that, right? Again, the system that is now called 52 blocks is a composite of a bunch of other jailhouse systems. They were a composite of a bunch of other uh, slave time systems, right? They all got melded together in HDM, right? These individuals took the different jailhouse systems and was like, yo, let's put that together and see what we can come up with. They came up with jailhouse, right? Jailhouse became 52 when it hit the street, right? Now... I said um, in the most recent podcast I did, that at one time, you know, to me, I always looked at um, New York City as like feudal Japan and all the different boroughs with their own little fiefdoms, right? And just like with um, Japan, right, you had different styles of kendo or kenjutsu, right? 
you had different styles of 52 blocks, right? Dudes from Harlem like to be flashy, so a lot of the times you would find them using more of the fan-type motions and windmill-type motions, right? Because it, it was fancy. It looked fancy, right? Boom. Brooklyn dudes, back in the days, in the Nation of Gods and Herbs, they would say that the Warriors came from Medina and the Thinkers came from Pelon. Pelon is the Bronx, Medina is Brooklyn. Brooklyn has always been known for its fighters, right? You look at professional boxers that come out of Brooklyn, and one thing that most of them have in common, they love using short punches, right? Hooks and uppercuts. You can identify that. As this is, you can look, go look at it. Mike Tyson, Shannon Briggs, Riddick Bowe, uh, Zab Judah. Look at them, right? They all have that in common. You'll find that they all have nice hooks and nice uppercuts. Brooklyn has always produced warriors, but Brooklyn warriors have always been kind of brutal. Brooklyn 52 practitioners like to use their elbows, right? You see that a lot with guys coming out of Brooklyn, right? And it was the same with different boroughs. Different boroughs had their own little flavor. However, the distraction, the deception, the hand movement, and all of that was always there. The footwork was one of the things that remained constant no matter what borough you was from, right? It's just different expressions of the same system. Just like all the different styles of karate can trace their lineage back to a single, well, a trilateral root. Because according to stuff that I've read, there were three families or three villages that were like the progenitors of all the karate systems that we see now. And you have so many different types of karate. Nobody argues the validity of each one. I've never heard somebody say that Gojuru wasn't karate. I've never heard somebody say that uh, Wadoru wasn't karate, right? Why? But why is it that when we talk about 52, it's, oh, well, 52 has never been a coherent system. You can't find any two 52 practitioners who will agree on, that's bullshit, right? Like Burley and I have had discussions, right, and R52 is vastly different. But they contain similar elements, and he and I both agree, right, in you can ask me that there are certain elements that have to exist inside the system for it to be considered 52, right? There are certain blocks that are like mother blocks, for lack of a better term, right? That you'll find across spectrum in 52, right? I don't care where you go, what 52 practitioner you're looking at, certain blocks are always going to be there, right? They may differ overall. But certain blocks are always going to be there. Like I said, that footwork is going to be there, right? And it comes out of the prison system. It was made to maximize close space, right? You're not fighting in a boxing ring. A lot of times you're fighting in the jail cell. You're fighting on the tier. You're fighting multiple opponents. you got to maximize a little bit of space you got to the best of your advantage. That footwork is still there, right? Even when you're fighting in the street. Come on, you grew up in New York City streets, especially in the 70s and 80s. You know what them streets look like. Them sidewalks is uneven and all kind of craziness. You don't want to be moving too much. You trip, you trip off the curb, right? So you try to stand where you at and make the best of that space right there. So these are elements that it is, right? The fact that these elements are consistent across spectrum from 152 practitioner to the other means that at some point there was a coherent system. There was a guideline. A root, a base, a, 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 a blueprint that dudes were following, right? Again, I'm pretty sure that if we were Asian, we wouldn't be having this discussion right now, right? I'm, I'm pretty sure of that because, again, karate, a generic term that describes all these different systems. Kung Fu is the same thing. Kung Fu is a generic term, right, which defines a whole bunch of systems, right? Boom. Why is that? Kali, Eskrima, Arnis, these three are des uh, basically generic terms. What's defined? Filipino martial arts, right? So they just call it FMA, Filipino martial arts. But there's so many different types of Filipino martial arts, but they all share commonalities, right? Yo, man, people from the street know the thing is real. It's been real. People have been using it. For decades, right? Just because you are only now becoming aware of it doesn't make it any less valid, right? Doesn't make it any less systemized. If you haven't been 
to the place where it comes from. And if you haven't spoken to, because you don't have to go to prison in old 52, real 52, right? That's, that's nonsense, right? But if you haven't spoken with people who got it from those people, no, you shouldn't be talking, man. And again, I'm not trying to disparage or uh, disrespect or offend anybody, right? But I don't speak on things that I have no real knowledge of. And I don't think other people, when you do that, you make yourself look foolish, right? I don't like looking foolish. Right? So I'm not going to speak authoritatively on something that I don't know. What I will do is ask questions. If I have an idea or an opinion, I make sure that I make it clear that this is my thought and my opinion on the thing that we're discussing. However, I could be wrong. Right? See? Now you make room for correction. Right? But when you speak like an authority on something you have no first-hand knowledge of, that becomes a problem. Right? So, I just want to clear that up. Right? There are things that guide 52 block practitioners. And you'll find them, again, any 52 block practitioner, if they're a real 52 block practitioner, there are certain elements that are going to be consistent. Right? It's just how I do mine. So again, VTK. Right? I grew up in a violent environment. I understand that maximum violence when you're dealing with violent people is the best solution to that problem. So I want VTK to be as violent as possible. Right? If your situation calls for violence, I want you to be able to uh, execute with maximum violence. Uh, Light has geared his more towards sport. You see him doing his thing right now. He's got fighters fighting in both boxing and MMA. Boom. But he still keeps his elements of 52 present. Right? Uh, you got Wise Morrow down in Atlanta. His 52 doesn't look like mine's or Light's. Right? But there are certain elements that are present. The brothers from the Constellation, you look at what they do, right? And K, Big K is official. They, 52 is official. But it's never going to look exactly the same. It's all depending on the end of it, with, just like with any martial art, right? Each style of karate was developed based on the experience of the person who was like, all right, I studied this karate and I studied that karate. I got into this many fights. These things help me from these two. Let me put these together. And then this is what I want to tweak these so this looks a little bit different because I feel that it will work better in this situation. When God came at me with the knife like this, this block didn't work, this block served me better, boom. And he bases his system on that. It's the same thing with 52, right? It's no different, right? That doesn't make it any less systemized, right? If you, if you don't know, just say you don't know, right? And if you don't know, ask. That's how we learn, right? I'm always open to learning. If I say something that I'm mistaken, I would hope that somebody would take the initiative to pull me up on it, right? Boom. Um, so, that having been said, I'm not going to make this a long, drawn-out rant. Right? I just want to give people something to think about, man. A different perspective on how to view the 52. Right? And, and how to respect the heritage that is the 52, where it comes from. Right? Boom. And I'm not talking about respect the prison. I'm not talking about that because it goes back past that. Right? And... Oh, that was one of the things, too, about uh, the guy, one guy, right, was saying that um, he thinks that people try to make these connections to give the system validity in order to deceive people, right? I'm an open book. You got something you want to ask me? Ask me. If I don't know, I'll tell you I don't know, and I'll try to direct you to the best source, right? It's never my intent to deceive people. I give you the history how it was given to me, right? The man that gave me the history gave it to me how he put it together or how it was given to him or however that went. Right? But the reality of the situation is that black people have been fighting since black people have been in existence. Right? And it would be foolish to believe that when they hit the shores of America, they just suddenly forgot how to fight. Right? That somehow all that knowledge just went out the window. Right? And it would also be foolish to believe that they stopped fighting. Right, when they got here, right? Because history says otherwise. And we could go past just the Nat Turner Rebellion. There was a whole bunch of other little rebellions that took place that they don't ever talk about. Right? Again, and it was a known fact that you had slave masters who would take fighters from one plantation to another plantation. And they would bet on these fights. Right? So this is known. Right? And it would be foolish to think that these men were fighting and they were just going out there. Ugh! Right, that there was no skill involved. 
right? And then they wasn't developing skill as they went because any fighter is always learning from every fight he gets into. He's learning what he did that worked well and how he can make it work better, what didn't work, and we're not going to do that no more. How did that guy hit me with that punch? I like the way he did that. I like the way he set it up. I'm going to adapt that into my style, right? This is what fighters do. So it would be foolish to think that black fighters are different in that respect. It's also a known fact that, like I said in the interview, reconstruction and all of that did happen. More black people ended up in prison. It would be foolish to think that they stopped fighting when they was in the environment of prison. Right? So there's, you know, I, I don't understand why it's so hard to believe or accept the fact that the thing is real. I don't understand why it's so hard to accept and respect the fact that, you know, we fight, man, right? But it's not my job to change the minds of individuals who believe themselves to be authorities and things that they have no first-hand knowledge of, nor is it my job to try to change the view or opinions that some people may have of my people, right? That's not my job. That's not why I'm here. I'm here to learn, man. I'm here to teach whoever wants to, who takes an interest in what I have to teach. And I want to grow, man. And we grow together, right? If a person knows something that I don't, man, and you want to share, yo, share it with me, man. I'm always open to learning, right? I have always want to enhance my skill set. And if you think that I know something that could help you, ask, man. And again, if I can answer your question, I'm always going to answer your question honestly and to the best of my knowledge, right? And that's all it's about. So with that, I'm going to sign off. Shadow 52 VTK Concepts. Thank you all who watched, and I will see you on the other side. Hold on, baby.